In this video, we are going to talk about accelerated failure time models in survival analysis. We want to do regression in survival, meaning we want to know are certain covariates or predictors increase or decrease the survival. There are two traditional ways to do this, either AFT, which models the time directly, or Cox proportional hazard, which models the hazard or the risk function. I discussed Cox pH models in previous videos, so you should check them out. I will link them to this video. So how do we model the time to event in AFT? Let x be our time to event, y will be the log of x, and z a vector of potential risk factors. We assume a linear regression between the transformed variable and our covariate of interest, denoted here by z. Epsilon is the stochastic part. Why do we take the log? Well, notice that x is a positive quantity. We are going to model it with a linear predictor denoted by eta. In the 1D case, a linear line with any slope that isn't zero could reach negative values, which is not allowed. Because of that, we will transform it using the log, and what we get is a quantity that is unconstrained. This might not always be necessary, as it could be that our linear predictors will come out positive and large enough that we wouldn't have to worry about it. But it's a common way to avoid any problems. So for the rest of the video, I will assume this transformation. Notice that a positive beta increases the time to event, meaning that it decreases the risk. And negative beta decreases the time to event, meaning it increases the risk. This is important. The coefficients interpretation is reversed between AFT and Cox pH. If we transform back to x, we see that we get some constant, which is the exponent of the linear predictor times the stochastic part. In the simplest form, let's assume we only have one binary variable, and so the linear predictor is equal to 0 when z1 is 0 and beta 1 when z1 is 1. This means that a positive beta will make the constant bigger than one, and so the time to event is longer. And a negative beta will make the constant smaller, a fraction, and so the time to event is shorter. The choice of the distribution for epsilon determines also the distribution for x, the time to event. If we take epsilon to be normal, then x is log normal. If epsilon is logistic, then x is log logistic. If epsilon is Gumbel, then x is Weibull. And as Weibull includes also the exponential distribution, if the parameter b is 1, then x is exponential. This is what is meant by the fact that AFT models are fully parametric. Whatever noise distribution we choose, we will get an implied distribution for x. The analysis is not data-driven, but driven by a parametric model. The log normal and log logistic can have non-monotonic hazard functions. For example, remembering that the hazard is the PDF divided by the survival function, here we can see the plot of the hazard of the log normal distribution with parameters 0 and 1, where little phi is the PDF of the standard normal distribution and big phi is the CDF. Notice it first go up and then go down. This could make sense in some scenarios, but maybe not in others where we expect the hazard to be monotonically increasing. Here we can see the derivation for the log logistic function. This is the PDF of the logistic distribution. If we change variables, we get the following PDF. And if we transform the parameters, we end up with this PDF. Note that this is equivalent to the form shown in Wikipedia at the time of making this video, which is simply dividing the numerator and denominator by a to the power of 2b. The logistic 0, 1 distribution translates to the log logistic 1, 1. The hazard for the log logistic 1, 1 is shown in this graph and is always decreasing. But if we increase b to be above 1, we get a graph similar to the one over here, which depicts the hazard for the log logistic 1, 2. The overall shape resembles the log normal. Here you can see both the log logistic 1, 2 and the log normal 0, 1 side by side. Let's move to the Gumbel distribution. These are the CDF and PDF of the Gumbel. Note that this is the minimum extreme value variation of the Gumbel distribution. There is also the maximum extreme value where we need to transform x to minus x. The Wikipedia definition is of the maximum. 
If we change variables and transform the parameters, we get the following PDF, which is equal to the Vibool PDF. Specifically, for k equal 1, we get the exponential distribution. Notice that the parameterization I used for the Vibool distribution is such that the Vibool lambda corresponds to the exponential 1 over lambda. For k equal 1, we get that the hazard is constant. But for different k's, we get different hazards. For k between 0 and 1, the hazard is decreasing in the form of 1 over x. For k between 1 and 2, the hazard is increasing in the form of square root of x. And for k greater than 2, the hazard is increasing polynomially. We can see this on this graph. Here for k less than 1. Here for 1. Here for k between 1 and 2. And here for k greater than 2. How do we estimate the betas in this model? Well, since this is a fully parametric model, we can simply write out the likelihood and maximize it. For example, in the case of right type 1 censoring, the data is ordered as t's and deltas, where the t's is the time to event or to censoring, and the deltas are the indicator variables where 1 means event and 0 means censor. The likelihood is written like this. Both the PDF and survival functions are known, and we simply need to optimize this. Unfortunately, there are no closed form solutions and we resort to numerical optimization. Here is a very simple derivation for the Gumbel 01. This results in the time to event distributing exponential. In order to avoid dealing with the minus sign, I'm simply going to swallow it in the betas. Deriving the likelihood for the data, we get this, and taking the derivative, we get this. We cannot simply equate this to zero and get a solution, so we need to either do gradient ascent or use the newton raphson method, which requires a second derivative or the Hessian. This is what the survival package in R uses. Finally, you might wonder, why is this model called accelerated failure time? Well, let's look at the survival function. Let's denote by S0 the survival function when the risk factor is equal to zero. Notice that when we look at the full survival, it is actually equal to this S0 but of x adjusted by some value. In the case of the log transformation, it is x multiplied by this. So depending on the sign of beta, the risk factor z either accelerates or decelerates the time to event. An illustrative example can be thought of as the survival of dogs. It is said that the human year is equal to seven dog years. Suppose our z is are you a dog or not? and that S0 is when you are not a dog, meaning you are a human. Then the survival function of dogs is like that of humans, only accelerated. Visually, if the factor is 0.5 or 2, then the distance between the two survival curves, when z is equal to 0 versus when it's equal to 1, is always half or double, depending on your reference curve. If we plot the survival versus the log of the time, we should see a constant difference between the curves. Well, this is all for this video. See you in the next one.